So the Lifecycle Management Conference, uh, this is the eighth edition of this, uh, in this series of conference, we started in uh, 2001. This is a very special conference because it's not an academic conference, it's not a business conference, it's something in between. So we are basically gathering 718 participants, one third from industry, one third from academia, and one third from public institution and other national governmental institutions. Why Luxembourg? Because we were chosen in 2014, so we were chosen by a selection committee, and uh, so we simply presented the best, uh, the best candidature, uh, highlighting the, all the potential and all the excellence in research and innovation of Luxembourg. The first thing for the transition is the profitability. Uh, you cannot protect the environment with a lot of support from everybody if it's very expensive. So what is possible today is to select the solutions that are the most profitable to protect the environment, that create jobs, that uh, sustain growth, but a cleaner growth that is better than a dirty st status quo. What I do on my side with the Solar Impulse Foundation and the World Alliance for Efficient Solutions today is to select a lot of solutions to gather startups or corporations who have solutions to protect the environment in a more profitable way. And I see that there is a lot of possibilities of collaboration. There is a lot of these solutions that can be useful for you. You can assess some of our members' solutions so we are sure we are, we are on the right path. So I'm very impressed when I understood what you are doing and in 45 countries coming here in Luxembourg to speak about the best practice, I'm very impressed. I think the biggest challenge is to make it uh, meaningful from a profitability standpoint, as one of our speakers said today. It should be meaningful in that it serves the communities in which we work. To, to make sure that uh, pollution uh, coming from our operations is contained. And once it's contained, it is recycled and not put into uh, waste facilities. We have byproducts that we produce in our steelmaking operations, such as slag. We turn it into cement. We use our off gases to produce electricity. And we are now experimenting with the use of certain uh, biofuels, which are grown from trees, for example, and put into our blast furnaces and we can recycle the carbon dioxide and turn it into ethanol. Those are experimental projects we are using. So it's very much part of the, the, the fabric of our business. Life cycle thinking is essential. Life cycle essentially means to think about the whole system from the beginning to the end. And I think that's what we're all doing, recognizing that the planet has only so many resources, how can we use things best? And if we just take piecemeal approaches, the silo approach that is so typical now in our world kills us. So that makes life cycle assessment so special that it looks at the whole. The budget of the planet is one planet, and so to understand how much it takes for all our activities to provide those activities compared to how many planets we have is an important view. And I think the fascinating part for me is kind of this coming together of the macro view, the macro necessities of what we need to achieve collectively, and to also understand each piece, how it relates to this macro reality. And that's, I think, the magic that's happening here and more and more conversations being able to bridge that gap between the macro necessities and the micro possibilities.